just when you thought it couldn't get more complex. Let's look at complex inheritance patterns. All right, so polygenic inheritance is a trait that's produced by two or more genes. Usually it has like a range in phenotype. One famous um, or popular example of this is skin color. You know, skin color goes from uh, low melanin production to a light color all the way up to high melanin production, which will um, be a very, very dark color. And melanin production is um, the color for brown. And um, no matter what range you are in between there, you have the same gene. You're just producing more of it uh, if you have more of it, I guess. Um, okay, so that would be an example. It's also eye color, sometimes even height and personality. You know, height is a scale, and so its gene is, poly, is polygenic as well. All right, occasionally, epistasis can occur. And that's when one gene overshadows all others. So in Labrador Retriever, you know, um, their colors have a overshadowing. It's the same thing as albinoism. It doesn't really matter what genes you have in there. If you are coding for albinoism, you're going to be albino regardless of what other uh, multiple alleles you carry. A lot of genes are also linked, like one has to happen before the other. Genes that are physically located on the same chromosome are usually inherited together. So if you know, there's a blonde hair and, and blue eyed parent and a red hair and freckles. Um, those are usually located really close to each other on the same chromosome. And so, you know, the chances are is that the offspring are inheriting uh, one piece of the chromosome is, is really from the majority of it's from one parent. And so it'll come together uh, to, to the new offspring. And so we call them linked. Uh, it doesn't always happen, but it does the majority of the time because uh, they're really close together. So linked genes really are only separated or broken apart during that one process in cell division where uh, it crossing over occurs. That's the only real reason or time when they could be, they could be mixed or unlinked. Uh, but for the most part, because they're located so close together, on the same chromosome, they are oftentimes inherited together. And that's why if you have one parent with, you know, red hair and freckles, and another parent has blonde hair and blue eyes, most of the children who are born that have red hair will eventually show freckles. So sex-linked traits, those are a little different. Males and females have exactly the same chromosomes for pairs that are one through 22. Those are called autosomes, but that last pair of chromosomes, those are called sex chromosomes. And those are the ones that are going to determine if your biological sex is female um, or male. Females are XX, males have an XY, and that X chromosome contains many genes that affect many different traits. The Y too, the Y chromosome also contains uh, genes that are usual to, or I'm sorry, that are specific to just uh, males, right? Because girls don't have them. And so X-linked genes are inherited through that female X chromosome. That doesn't mean that only girls have them because remember boys have an X too. So X-linked genes are normal and usually the principle of dominance applies, especially when it comes to male. And this is because females have two X's, so they can inherit both different copies of the gene, where a male is only going to get one X. So whatever's on that X, those are the genes that he has. A carrier is someone who carries the recessive trait, but they don't always show it due to having that dominant X. So if a female has a certain trait on one of her X chromosomes, she can be a carrier for it, and then oftentimes pass it to her offspring. Her offspring that are sons, that are male, can display whatever affected trait we're talking about because that son only has one option for his ex. So males inherit the gene on the X, that's from their mom, but not on the Y. 
They only have that one copy, and so they express whatever they got that's dominant and recessive that's on that X chromosome because there's nothing in the Y chromosome that's going to mask what's in the X chromosome. Colorblindness is a trait in humans that is passed through sex linked. So if you're looking at these uh, two dots right here, can you see the numbers in them? If you can, then you're not colorblind. If you cannot, you're like, what is she talking about? I see a little series of dots here. It's possible you might have uh, color blindness. And the reason that color blindness is really for males is because it's X linked or what we call sex linked. So here in my color blindness example, which is sex linked and it's recessive, all right, it's located on the X chromosome. So normal vision is what we would call XB. And color blindness, which is recessive, is X little b. So if I have an X chromosome with a dominant trait, then that is normal vision. If I have an X chromosome that has the recessive trait, then I am color blind. The Y chromosome doesn't have any gene for color blindness at all. So whatever gene the boy gets, he's going to express that. Where a girl, it's possible that she could get this gene and this gene, right? So she has the dominant version and the recessive version. She's heter heterozygous for uh, color blindness. So she's not gonna be colorblind. She has one of the dominant traits expected. So let's cross a woman who is a carrier for colorblindness. So if she's a carrier, she's going to have normal vision, but she's going to be a carrier for colorblindness. And a man who is normal. So a man is XY, and his X, he's normal, so he will have um, big B. So we're going to cross those, okay? And we take the B with this, so this X, uh, B, and this X will be. Um, and then for our boys here, we have mom can give her um, normal <laughs> gene there, and mom can give her color blindness gene there, and then these are Ys. Okay, so we have 50% uh, gals, right? And 50% boys. But when it comes to color blindness, her offspring only have this chance right here, a 25% chance of being colorblind. So every boy has a 50-50 shot at being colorblind. So our genotypic ratio, those are our genes, that is, they're all different, right? That is a 25 to 25 to 25 to 25. They're either going to be X, big B, X, big B if they're girls, X, big B, and X, little b carriers if they're girls, or normal sighted males or colorblind males, all right? So all the girls will be, will have normal, normal vision, right? But half of them will be carriers, all right? And 50% boys will be colorblind. Mm, colorblind. Okay. All right, this will definitely take some practice for you to learn how this really works and kind of get good at being able to predict what we can expect to see in our possible um, offspring.